So today we are not on, you know, the, the, the space is not in tens of chains or hundreds of chains. The space has grown to be thousands of chains. And that is split between public chains and private chains. The goal for CCIP has been and continues to be to be the secure standard to connect all of those chains. CCIP launched in general availability six months ago. And I'm really excited to say that since then, we have come a long way. We now have hundreds of tokens and dApps integrated with CCIP. Before I continue, I want to pause to say thank you. Thank you to all the protocols, the developers, the community members who have helped us get to where we are today. I also know that we have a lot left to do, and that's where I want to focus today. I want to cover some of the recent announcements and then talk about what's coming up next. Let's start with the announcements. As many of you know, we are introducing CCIP v1.5. First and foremost, v1.5 introduces self-serve token onboarding. This is a huge step forward for CCIP. Let's go into a bit more detail as to what self-serve token onboarding means. First of all, token developers can deploy cross-chain tokens entirely on their own. This applies for launching a new token, as well as taking an existing token cross-chain with CCIP. As a developer, you'll be able to do this using our CLI tools, or you'll be able to use the Token Manager, which is a new interface that we're releasing. The Token Manager is what you're seeing up on the screen right now, and, and you'll see it in a bit more detail in a video that's coming up soon. As a note, you'll also still be able to deploy custom token pools in case you need custom logic there. Next up, token developers will be able to manage those cross-chain tokens. If you've ever deployed a token to a large number of chains, you know just how meticulous it can be to manage all that cross-chain state. We wanted to make sure that the token manager not only helps you launch the token to be cross-chain, but also helps you manage the settings afterwards. Through the token manager, de developers can configure key parameters such as token pool rate limits across the different chains. They can also configure their tokens to grow to additional networks as CCIP grows to additional networks. There's quite a bit here, so I'm gonna play a quick two minute video to walk you through some of this functionality. We're proud to present the new Token Manager, your command center for cross-chain tokens on CCIP. Let's deploy some new CCTs. First, connect your wallet and select Deploy a new token in the wizard. Select the network and enter a token name and symbol. I'll enable a fixed supply and an amount to mint during deployment. Let's add additional networks where we want to enable our CCT. Avalanche sounds good. We have all we need to deploy. Now for the fun part. Starting on Ethereum, we're deploying our new token and token pool. We're accepting our new token admin role and accepting ownership of the token and token pool. Now we do the same thing for Avalanche. For security, we use Chainlink audited contracts under the hood, which always require a two-step process for managing roles. Congratulations, your new CCIP powered cross-chain token is live. Let's take you back to the dashboard. From your wallet, you can see any tokens where you're the token admin. We see your tokens and pools on different chains. Adding more networks is easy, bringing you into another guided deployment flow. We can also update configurations for any network or lane. For each lane, we can point to remote tokens and pools. We can also set in and outbound rate limits for added security. For each token, we can update admin, local pool, router, and allow list if your token pool is permissioned. It looks like I have a notification. I've been proposed as a token admin. I can accept that role or address detected issues right from the notification center. The token manager was designed with the user in mind, allowing you to visualize, administer, and configure cross-chain tokens and pools on CCIP. You have full control. We're proud to present the new token manager. Your command. I'm excited to say that the self-serve capabilities are launching on testnet starting 
today. The docs are, are, are already live, and if you're interested in learning more, I recommend joining the developer boot camps. Mainnet is launching soon, over the next few weeks, and along with that will come the token manager interface that you just saw. All right, next up, we're introducing token developer attestation. For the first time, token developers can now participate in the network security of CCIP. They can do this by independently attesting that the tokens were indeed burned on the source chain before CCIP can mint them on the destination. We're really proud to say that we're launching this in partnership with Lombard and their LBTC token. And as you can see in the diagram here, Lombard is providing an independent third-party attestation API that's confirming that the LBTC tokens were burned on the source chain before CCIP can mint them via the off-ramp on the destination. Though this is not part of the self-serve capabilities, we are excited to say that it's launching in private beta starting today. If you're interested in learning more, please reach out to our go-to-market team. They'd be happy to talk to you. With all these really awesome improvements to CCIP tokens, we thought we'd take the opportunity to wrap all of this into a single standard, which we now call cross-chain tokens. I want to call out, you know, with this cross-chain token standard, developers are not required to pull CCIP code directly into their token contract, such as their ERC-20. Cross-chain tokens are a standard that allows token developers to make their own, their, their new or existing tokens cross-chain compatible by enabling it with CCIP. The standard itself includes auxiliary smart contracts, such as the CCIP token pools that allow token developers to enable that cross-chain functionality. We went this route rather than force developers to alter upgrade, or lock in CCIP code directly in their ERC-20. We wanted developers to retain that flexibility while still getting access to all of CCIP's really great functionality, including programmable token transfers, token pool rate limits, token developer attestations, and more in the future. By leveraging cross-chain tokens, developers will get access to all these great features that we already have, and as we continue to add more, developers will continue to benefit. We really think this is a great choice for developers that are looking to create new tokens that are, that are uh, cross-chain or take existing tokens cross-chain. And by adopting cross-chain tokens, you'll be joining with so many other top-tier protocols who have already chosen CCIP as their underlying protocol for making their token cross-chain. Now that we've discussed some of the new functionality for CCIP tokens, I also want to talk about some of the functionality that's going to help all developers. First of all, we're introducing a new CCIP Explorer. It's completely refreshed with a new UI and a new look and feel, but with also a lot more detail. This is really great for you as a developer if you're looking to launch with CCIP or debug your implementation, but it's also really great for your end users who are going to be seeing the Explorer every time they do a CCIP transaction if they want to track the status of that transaction. We're also launching the CCIP SDK very soon. The CCIP SDK makes it easy for developers to integrate CCIP into their front-end dApp in just a few lines of code. It's super easy to use, and it's going to make the, develop, the developer experience for dApps really great. We're also launching the CCIP directory, which is one central place that all of the different lanes, networks, uh, tokens, everything that you can build on with CCIP will be aggregated into one easy-to-consume place with some great search functionality as well. So let's recap some of the recent announcements. We launched self-serve tokens. We introduced token developer attestations, as well as the cross-chain token standard. We introduced new developer capabilities. 
And beyond all this, I'm also excited to say that what's coming up next is coming up soon. CCIP v1.6 is in public audit starting tomorrow. And CCIP v1.6 includes a lot of great architectural improvements that are going to make it easier for us to scale to a large number of EVM chains, make CCIP more gas efficient for you and for your end users. It's going to make it easier for us to integrate with non-EVM chains, such as Solana. And it also introduces a cross-chain billing system. The primary goal of the cross-chain billing system is to support the long-term sustainability of CCIP. The system reduces payment friction for end users by enabling them to pay in tokens that they already have. The various tokens used for fee payments across chains are then turned into Link, which flows to network service providers. This is achieved through a combination of CCIP, automations, price feeds, and AMM smart contracts. We look forward to sharing more information about this in the future. I want to end by saying thank you. Thanks for taking the time here today. And if you're interested in learning even more about CCIP v1.5 and self-serve tokens, please join the self-serve masterclass, which is coming up soon. Thanks again.